my name is Shang. If you haven't known me yet, some of them, you already know me, so. Uh, I'm uh, very thankful to have this opportunity to share uh, what I prepare, what I learn, and uh, I'm also uh, thankful to this church and to the Ministry of uh, uh, Global Awakening, uh, Randy Clark. Uh, one thing I like, what I learned from Randy Clark is he said, uh, in the physical healing class, he said, uh, in the history of Christianity, sometimes uh, th uh, there are different streams, like even to the physical healing, different physical healing ministry, they have different streams. Uh, they all have something to contribute to uh, the area's physical healing. But he went back the history of different stream of physical healing and he, uh, he, he made a conclusion that sometimes we make a mistake. We, if, we in, if we are in one stream, we tend to make a mistake because we, we probably we receive something from the Lord that we consider we are the river. But uh, Randy Clark said, no, we are not the river. Christ, Holy Spirit is the river. Every church is is, is a different stream. And all the stream will com, uh, combine together to be a river, the river. Christ, uh, the God is the river. So <laughs> what, what, I'm, uh, what I'm about to share is from my own experience, own study, uh, not from uh, this church, from Randy Club, but from uh, my past uh, stream. So whatever, because I, I just shaped for, for the past 10 years or 15 years of Christian experience. So what I'm about to share, maybe uh, uh, fresh new to you or maybe, you know, unacceptable, I, I don't know. But I just share uh, something from my heart that when during worship I was reminded of uh, Chinese idioms. Uh, the, the word is ta shan zhi shi ke gong yu. That means uh, there's a very old Chinese saying uh, it, this Chinese thing encourages people to learn from each other. For example, if you live in this country, you have a mountain, but in that country they have another mountain. So in, in your mountain, you may have jade, the precious material. But in other mountains, you pick a stone over there, a stone despise that stone. That stone may be a jade, a precious material, maybe not. Even if it is uh, not a precious material, uh, this uh, saying is the other mountain stone can polish jade. Even you learn something from others, they are not valuable as y yours, but even a stone can polish your own jade. Because in the old time, you don't have a certain tool uh, like a, a metal, metal or to, uh, other uh, modern tool to polish the jade. They use stone to polish stone. So uh, uh, that's what I'm sharing from my heart. Because uh, uh, back to my experience that uh, uh, about uh, some know this story, uh, some don't. Uh, by 2015, I've been uh, in evangelical church for over uh, 13, 14 years. I had a, a life crisis in my uh, crisis in my life. We, 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 were, uh, we were barren for 10 years, so we seek every help in evangelical church we couldn't, and we uh, somehow came out uh, our evangelical church in 2015 and to seek healing in charismatic church. I didn't know the charismatic church in the beginning, but uh, I was uh, listening online to learn about the healing, I learned about prophecy, I learned how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So uh, that's a long, uh, long, make long story short. I received my prayer language in 2015. Then I was excited. I know I can talk to God through uh, tongues. So I uh, heard a lot of messages. You gotta pray in tongues uh, at least 30 minutes a day. So I'm trying. But while I'm learning a new thing uh, from the other mountain, uh, I found something very interesting. So. Uh, I love to uh, pray in tongues. I love to uh, pr pray in the spirit. But I find I'm not sure uh, this is true for, to your experience. But in my own experience, sometimes when I'm in the spirit, when I'm peaceful, I pray in tongues. It's no problem. 
But sometimes my heart is full of anxiety. My heart is troubled. My emotion is not stable. I'm worrying if I have the kid. I know I should not worry. Pastor John said, don't worry. It's part of the plan. But sometimes I worry. I worry so much and I'm not in my spirit. I'm not peaceful. So that time I tried to pray in, in, in town. I don't feel I get comforted like I used to pray in uh, mind, in understanding. So what I went back to uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Paul says this, hey, what is the outcome then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the man also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the man also. So uh, even comes to prayer, different stream, they have different prayer models. Uh, of course, I learned about the uh, uh, praying in tongues. Uh, there's a lot of things I, I really appreciate. So uh, out of that distress, uh, I worry. I find praying in tongues may not be helpful for me if I'm, my soul is not in the right state because I'm not in the spirit. My soul is, uh, is, is being bothered by something. So then I reflect a, a, a simple prayer I learned uh, before. So I, I just want to share the title of this message is a simple prayer calling on the name of the Lord. So I learned from this, I, I, I used to practice this, but since I started praying down, I, I don't practice this a lot, but uh, when I felt I'm not uh, peaceful, uh, I, w I went back to this prayer and it helps, helps uh, me relieve uh, the pressure, the anxiety I'm having. So I just share about this. Uh, of course, I combine with some teaching from a global awakening. Uh, Ro Roman ten thirteen says, "Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever call will call on the name of the Lord will be saved." And that say I'm quoting from a uh, New American Standard Ber uh, uh, Version Bible. The word "save" is "sozo" in Greek. And it has meanings of at least three meanings salvation, uh, physical healing, and deliverance. So I, I didn't know about this before, but uh, this is, this is uh, some verses, and the quotation is from the Randy Clark Ministry tr Team Training Manual, Chapter 3, Solo. So uh, in this verse, uh, Romans 10 13, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved or shall be saved. Because when they only ex uh, stress on the salvation. So when you are calling on the name of the Lord, you open your heart to receive the Lord, and you will be saved from eternal perdition. You, you, this only uh, talks about redemption. But through the different stream I learned, uh, I know uh, uh, Basel Church, they have a Sozo ministry. I'm quoting from a uh, Randy Clark Ministry team training man material right now. The word solo is used more than 110 times in the New Testament. First, the salvation. Here are some verses uh, I'm going to read to you, so I'll just review it. It's Acts 4.12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. This is self. I'm uh, speaking the first aspect, salvation. Then uh, another verse, Romans 10, 9. And there is salvation in, in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself in the gift of God. These verses are referring to salvation, redemption. And second aspect is healing. Matthew 9.22 But Jesus turning and seeing her said, Daughter, take courage. Your faith has made you well. This is from New American Standard. But in NIV version, it says healing. So, the, so your body is healed, is being healed. Uh, Mark 6.56 when, whenever he entered village or cities or countryside, 
they were laying the sick in the marketplace and imploring him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak. And as many as touched, it was being cured or healed. It's so. And Mark 10, 52. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And Ivy says, Heal, healed. Immediately he regained his sight and began, began following him on the road. So this is the second aspect of the word soda. The third aspect is deliverance. Not being delivered from the evil spirit, but also delivered from our anxiety. This is uh, oh, I'm, I'm about to talk today. Uh, uh, Luke 8, 6, 36 says, Those who have seen it reported to them how the man who was demon-possessed had been made well, had been delivered. This is delivered from the evil spirit. It's so them. And but first, Second Timothy four eighteen said, "The Lord will rescue Sozo, me, from every evil deed, and will bring me safely to His heavenly kingdom. To Him be the glory forever and ever." Amen. So Paul experienced a lot of difficulties, but he trusts this God. The Lord will rescue, will Sozo him from every evil deed. So in our daily life, there are people. They're the enemy trying to be against us. But the Bible says no weapon shall be formed against us. And Paul says we're going to be delivered from the evil thing. And Jude 1, 5. Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the end after saving, so they delivered a people out of the land of Egypt. So uh, Jude considered when Israel dies, came out of Egypt, he was delivered. Delivered from the hand of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is, of course, the representative of the world, the king of this world. So, uh, he was delivered. So, uh, also I'm quoting another verse, is First Thessalonians 5.23. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So first Thessalonians five twenty three uh, basically talks about we are a three part tripartite being. We have a soul, we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. And so uh, and this verse talks about the God God wants uh, preserve our entire being, not only spirit, not only soul but also body to be complete until the day the Lord is coming. So the salvation, this, this salvation is, uh, is complete salvation. It's a social ministry. It's a sa salvation for our spirit and a saving uh, transformation for our soul. And it's also a healing and deliverance for our body. It's a complete whole uh, saving ministry of Jesus Christ. Because uh, I recently uh, had a miracle baby. Uh, so I'm learning to be a dad. Uh, you know, uh, they said, if you, uh, this is also some Chinese people say, see, if you read the uh, uh, first child, you learn by book. You read by book. But you read the child, uh, this is not a good word. This said you read it like a pig, because you know everything. You don't care anymore. But the first baby, we don't know anything, so we have to Google everything online. So sometimes you get good advice, sometimes you get bad advice. One of the things we, we are getting is, so when baby cries, what are you going to do? You're going to let her, her she can cry and don't worry about it? I, or you just hold her and feed her immediately. There are different things. Some people are saying extreme. Said, don't uh, if the when the baby cry, don't feed her in the night. Just let her cry. Then cry until later. She will never cry anymore because because he, he, she will be used. To it. There are a lot of things like that. So we don't know. And they have a, a good uh, reason. They said, if you hold her too much. Uh, she will be spoiled, and uh, you, because uh, we've been, uh, we have this too many problems in China because we have a one-child policy. 
there are so many people being spoiled. So this kind of thing, why it is popular among Chinese people? Because we've seen a generation of young Chinese people, they are like a king, like a queen. They see, they, they, are, they are spoiled. <laughs> Out of any reason. So, so this, many new Chinese parents, they said, we don't want our children to be spoiled. That's why uh, they buy to these things sometimes. Uh, I, then I learned why. They said, when you don't feed the baby in the evening, uh, you know, they will used to, you, they will be, begin to use to it. And then their uh, brain will give them stomach signals. It's okay, no food, sleep, <laughs> no food, sleep. <laughs> then they get used to it. But the bad thing is, when they always, when you always do this, the baby, the stomach will not will will become you know will not be developed as it is supposed to be. So the, their uh, stomach will remain very tiny. So even when they grow up, uh, their stomach is not developed. So it's, it's a joke, but it also happened to our spiritual life. <laughs> you know, John seven thirty seven thirty nine says. Jesus uh, stood in high place. He said, uh, uh, "Those who are thirsty come to me. I shall have him to drink uh, the water of life freely. Out of him will come out the well of spring water of life." Uh, and this uh, also strange. So when I came to the charismatic side, people, some people said on the over the internet, I said, "Where is our spirit? We don't know where is our spirit is." So we are oh, just a mystery. We don't know where it's spirit. But when I once listened to some message of a charismatic teacher, they said, some people said, the spirit is in our stomach. Why? Because John 7, 37, 39 says, out of our stomach, out of our belly, flows the river of water of life. And they even have the uh, medical, medical uh, scientific view. And they had a study, this is interesting. They had a study, they found in our intestine, uh, there are millions of limbs and brain cells. This is uh, proved in the medical sense. I don't know if it's true or not, but people are saying this. But they were saying it. Uh, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I personally feel our human spirit is a spiritual stomach for our spiritual life. So uh, if our spirit is feed, uh, property, and then our spirit is, will have the proper growth. But if our spirit is not fed properly, just like the baby, we will cry. Uh, we will cry because we, we haven't been fed a, a property consistently. Uh, we probably receive a mess from our head or whatever. No food. It's okay. Just, just sleeping. Sleeping will be better. So I, I'm learning an inner healing class. Uh, from Global Awakening. One of the books is John uh, Sanford. He wrote about uh, healing the wounded his, uh, spirit. He said in America, in many churches, many believers, they have a wounded spirit. And this could happen in many, many uh, ways. For example, if I was in a family, I was not tended properly in my soul by my parents or by my environment. I could develop an orphan spirit. I could develop a wounded spirit. So in that case, I, because uh, they always say this, because we always uh, reflect on our authority, our parents, as the image of God the Father. So if we not, if we're, if we were not treat properly, fed properly, we consider God is not loved because nobody around me loves me. This is a wrong uh, conception, but it's a wounded spirit. He said, we need to be healed from this wounded spirit. One of the ways is, you know, by hugging people, by feeding properly. So if our spirit is not fed properly, we will develop, a, uh, this is from uh, the book, John uh, Sanford, he, uh, from the wounded spirit. He, he, he coined a word called slumbering spirit. You have a spirit. But he said many Christians uh, in the church today, they have a slumbering spirit. Like the baby, they have a spirit, they're not dead yet, but they are a wizard. <laughs> they are a wizard. Uh, that's why Paul, uh, uh, Peter says this. Peter says, First Peter 2.2, 2, Therefore, putting aside all malice, all deceit, 
and uh, hypocrisy and envy and all slander. These are all babyish things. Uh, but like a newborn babies, long for pure, pure milk of the word, <coughs> word, word of God, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. If you have a taste the kindness of the Lord, like we sang today, we have taste and see that the Lord is good. So we need uh, uh, to long for the pure milk, the word of God, like Peter said. But on the other hand, Paul talks in First Corinthians three, chapter three, verse three, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as a spiritual man, but as to man of flesh, as to infants in Christ. I give you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. This is Paul's uh, uh, complaining to the believers in First Corinthians and John Sanford in his book is writing, not condemning any believers, but he was saying like uh, many times we were supposed to grow into a more mature level so we can receive solid food. But it, uh, if we are not uh, re ready to receive solid food, uh, so he will give us the milk. So uh, also I learned from the uh, the teaching from uh, Rodney Hughes uh, from Global Wing. He's a wonderful teacher. He said in Christian experience there are three stages of growth. First stage he calls receive, just like a baby. You don't do anything, just receive. Just receive from the brother around you to pour out the love to you, the message to you. You don't do anything, but you just sit there to receive. And the second stage is, is doing. So uh, one day I become fervent for the Lord, I want to do something for the Lord. And, and the third stage is uh, being a father. I don't care about uh, doing too much for the Lord, but about the being in Christ, who I am, who, who I am in Christ. What is my identity? What is, is my being in Christ? Where am I? Uh, he, he was uh, saying that in, uh, in many uh, churches today, people jump so fast from the first stage to the second stage. So it's not, it's not saying that it's not good to do something for the Lord. But he said many Christians have never learned to receive from the Lord, never been fat enough. Then certainly outgrow to uh, do something for the Lord. And in that stage, the spirit of religion, religious spirit will come jump on in him and elect him to do something. And eventually he could not do it anymore. He could not do it anymore. I could grow, no, I don't want to go to church anymore. Because why? Because he has never re learned to receive. He was saying, receiving is not a baby thing. Receiving is, con even if you grow to the third stage of being, you constantly still learn how to receive from a father, from the son, from the uh, Holy Spirit, and from the body of Christ. You never grow, outgrow from the first stage. Even you are in the third stage, but you still constantly learning to receive. He was talking at uh, uh, one point, everybody, many believers have never learned how to receive who they are in Christ, their identity. They are bothered by sin or by condemnation, by past failure. But the, the word of the Lord says, you are a new man in Christ. And this is a huge thing. We are not talking to that. But, but I, I'm coming back to end uh, this very shortly. So I found out, uh, you see the baby thing. The baby, they start to feel some uh, uh, other supplementary food over six months or seven months, but before that they will ne ne they will never do that. If you put solid food too early, it will choke them. They're gonna not not gonna work. But I, what I find uh, is a constantly working. So this is I learned from another stream. Uh, it may be fresh too, and maybe uh, I'm wrong. So because. Uh, what I just, just presented to you, like I said in the earlier, I just brought a stone from other mountain, so you can you, you can examine if it works for you. It's a jade, or if it's not a jade, you use this stone to polish your own jade, divide your spiritual life. So what I learned about uh, calling on the name of the Lord, first, 
call it on, on the name of the Lord, it, whatever, whoever call on the name of the Lord in original Greek is call out, call out loud. Like I said, pray, reading the word, the word of God. So uh, what I learned when I am I'm, uh, in my soul, I feel despair, I feel uh, an anxious, so I just quiet down myself, uh, forget about anything else. I just focus on the Lord and call on his name. Audibly or inaudible, it doesn't matter. Uh, for five minutes or ten minutes, just call on the Lord, oh Lord Jesus, and continue. You don't have to bother on it. You can call silently, uh, you call on the uh, name of the Lord. Uh, this takes practice. Once you do this, I personally feel, I feel a lot of time, but I also experience sometimes when you pray this way, you, you will bring in peace surprising uh, the understanding. So this anxiety, is, according to Bob Jones, anxiety is the number one weapon from the hell, from the hell today. So uh, when, because uh, Philippine, why we should call on his name, uh, I'm, of course I mentioned Romans 10, 13, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, not only be saved from redemption, uh, eternal perdition, also uh, from uh, e evil spirit, but also from the de deliverance from your soulish an anguish, S the pain in your soul. Uh, Philippians 2 9 says his name is above every name. Because you have this name, this name, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, is above every name. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So, this name is not a regular name. It's the name of our God, Yeshua. Also, uh, we often heard this illustration. If you call a name, you get a person. For you, if I call Anasis, if I can ask him to come over here, please. Can you, please? For example, I'm just doing an illustration. Yeah. So if I ask his name, he's going to come. So you, get, you, you, you call on the name, you get the person. Thank you very much. So when we call on the Lord's name, it's not a small thing. He always comes, like we call come Holy Spirit. But we, if we call on the Lord's name, He will always come. He said, whenever you call on the name, you shall be saved. Yes. You shall be delivered. What a care, what, because uh, I think Peter said, He is a faithful creator and a shepherd of our soul. He's a, he created our soul. Mm -hmm. So in uh, one of my, one of the denominations I heard, the people, in, in some denomination, they don't care about the soul. They only care about other things. So, uh, but uh, I learned, he is a faithful creator and a shepherd of our soul. He knows every pain in our soul. So when we feel painful in our soul, we call on his name. And take practice, I shall surely deliver you. Also, I'm sharing another verse. Uh, also, his name is Amen. Uh, in just Revelation 3.13, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the Amen, the faithful and true witness. Yeah. The beginning of the creation of God say this. This is uh, Revelation 3.13. And 2 Corinthians 1.20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us in the glory of God. So whenever you call on the Lord's name, sometimes you, you uh, uh, a couple with the amen. And what that means is when you call on the Lord's name, the Lord's name is amen. So all the God's promise in Christ is amen, is yes. Amen is yes, is confirmation. But when we come to the Lord's name, we say amen. All the promise will be given to us. Uh, so his name, is, uh, the, this is the last point I'm gonna share, I'm gonna close so. uh, His name is all inclusive because uh, when Jesus Christ came on this earth, he had lived on this earth for 33 and a half years. He went through the human living. Yeah. 
the sufferings. All the humanity is in Christ, in His name. And also, not, He did not all, only uh, live a perfect human life, He understand the suffering, and He went through the trial, and He learned through obedience to receive blessing from the Father, but also He went on the cross. Many times, we know spiritual, we experience the cross, the things over, but we just can't experience this cross. We just can't die, you know. Just can't die, you just can't die to ourselves. But in the name, there's the power of this death. Because he went through the cross. And not only he went through the cross, he resurrected. So in his name, his name is being given above every name. So in his name also include the power of resurrection. Amen. Not only resurrection, he was ascended to do that. Uh, throne of the Father. So in his name, sometimes we are in a pit. Like, a, uh, like uh, in the old times, the war, one of the warriors, uh, David, he slipped into a pit in a snowy day, and there's a lion waiting for him. So you're going to stand up to kill the lion, or you're going to be the lion's food. So many times, we, Christian, we are feeling, facing a battle every day. We're going to, like uh, Bill Johnson, we're going to strengthen ourselves in the Lord to fight for the battle, or we're going to give up. People are going to stone me. The wives, the kids are kidnapped. What are we going to do? So many times, it, we have the power of name in resurrection. So I'm in the pit, there is snow in the day, I did something bad, and there is a lion facing me. What are I going to do? I'm going to strengthen myself in the Lord. I kill the lion. I get up. I'm going to become a warrior. You know, sometimes we, when we face disease, because we, 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 we experience this, because this is true. I, I face a lot of anxiety. You know, Pastor John gave us uh, the prophecy, comfort us, uh, encourage us. But if, even during these times, and many times I feel I'm in a pit, and there's a lion trying to eat me. <laughs> what are you going to do? Because I receive a word in the church today, and when I die home, I got a quarrel argument with my wife and the enemy lose the how to attack me. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I'm going to believe what I, the pastor just said in the church. What am I going to believe the circumstance in my family? Right. Yeah. So, so, and in his uh, name, there is the power of resurrection <coughs> and ascension. And he is, he never stopped his work. He is our high priest. Mm-hmm. He is constantly working in the heaven to pray for us to intercede for us. So he's waiting for you to call on his name and he will surely deliver you yeah. at that moment. He's waiting for you. So he's waiting for you. So anyway, this very short <laughs> illustration. So many times we try to fight this spirit battle with our own strength, but we don't have to. For example, if I got a cold, I only, what I need to do is take a pill. And this pill uh, will kill all the fever, sneezing nose, headache, if I have a correct pill. Everything is in the pill. So I, what, what I need to, to do is rest and take the pill and let the pill works in me. So this the name of the Lord is an all-inclusive name, just like the pill. Mm-hmm. So when we call on the names of the Lord, it's not a small thing. We're taking in the pill. Because his power, his, uh, the, the power of death, resurrection, and ascension is all in the name, is a pill. We take the take, they take, take, take a vitamin, the a pill. When we take the pill, the power of God's name will work in us. Yeah. Yeah. But the Christian uh, failure is always try to work on ourselves. And we constantly fail, but we don't know how, we don't know why. Because you never allow the working, the might of God's dynamite to work in you. And you only need to do is open your mouth because the Bible said, you open your mouth wide, I will feel you. Yeah. So it, Christian battle is about rest in the Lord and open our mouths to the Lord, open our hearts to the Lord, and the Lord will do the rest because this battle is not our battle, it's His battle. So uh, I, I'm going to uh, pray a shorter prayer uh, like the word of God uh, is not only a, a logos, uh, but uh, Romans ten fourteen says uh, we have faith. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from the word of God. The word of God is not logos. There it is rima. 
is the instant revelatory word of God. So I will pray a benediction and prayer. May the Lord work in every one of us as we, we humble ourselves. Uh, you know, we are not, uh, some, but we humble ourselves. We start from beginning. Because we never uh, graduate from breathing. We never graduate from eating milk. Even uh, we are adults, we can still drink milk. So when, when we get, go back to the base training, we daily feed our spirit with the word of God. Because uh, we, we, uh, we're going to uh, grow to the solid food. But in the very beginning, we, if we can uh, humble ourselves to try to practice daily, to open to th this practice. You can try. I, I'm not forcing on it. But if you can try it, uh, uh, you can see if it's going to work for you or not. I don't know. But I s just testify it works for me. So uh, I will just pray, Lord, we give glory to you. Father, we give glory to you. In the name of Jesus. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you have given us the name is above every name. So when we open to your name, your name is powerful. Yes. All the power is in your name because as Jesus said on this earth, if you pray, Father, pray to Father in my name, whatever you pray, he will give to you. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we, today we pray to your name. You're going to work a wonderful work in all our uh, dear brothers and sisters here. And strengthen our spirit, make our spirit a more competent vessel to feel, to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, the glory of God. And we pray in the name of Jesus, uh, and uh, we give glory to you. Amen and amen. We amen. say yes to every promise in the Bible, and we only need to say amen, spoken by us to the glory of God. Amen. 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 We we'll just, uh, we don't know how to uh, end this. We we'll just bless everyone here, and we will invite the um, uh, prayer minister to come for us. Uh, I really encourage you to come to get a prayer, or even you don't have some need to uh, be prayed for. Come to pray for the prayer minister, because we are all learning. We are not <laughs> selling something, uh, you know. Uh, we have we all receive from the Lord, so we may not have it because uh, we are learning. We are, may not have the healing you want immediately, but you come to strengthen us to help each other, and the church can be built up because this is about mutuality. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.